Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the April Garden Tour. We're finally getting around to showing you what's going on out here. Not all of the bulbs are in bloom yet, but some of them are and they're looking glorious. Before we get started, there are a couple things I wanted to talk about. First of all, I wanted to introduce you to the newest member of our family. This is Molly. Molly is a four month old German Shepherd puppy. We've had her here for about three days and she has been amazing. My parents had a, a German Shepherd. About the time I was leaving the house and going to college, we fell in love with her. She's passed since then because that seems like it's forever ago. Um, but I always knew that I wanted to get another one at some point. I want Benjamin to grow up with lots of animals around here, having a really um, like a deep, a deep respect for animals. And I think you get that from you know the experience. Uh, but she and Benjamin are getting along great. Russell, it's taken him a little bit. He's still adjusting. First day, he spent the whole day upstairs. <laughs> he wouldn't come downstairs and I felt horrible. I had that kind of sinking feeling like, what did I just do? Did I just rock his life? Is he gonna not love me anymore? But he's totally coming around. In fact, he comes down when she's sleeping and he gets really close to her and like does this at her paws. One of these days she's gonna wake up and he'll be in for it, but I think there'll be buds eventually. So super fun, you guys, this spring. We have so much going on and I just figured, you know what, bring it. Like we have a one-year-old, let's get a puppy, let's get chickens. May as well like go find a couple ducks somewhere. I've always wanted ducks in my yard. <laughs> so just a lot of activity around here. It's stretching for me because I've always been like a very ordered, like I like a clean house. I don't like a lot of clutter. Um, I don't like a lot of chaos around me. And now that's just my life <laughs> and it's amazing. So anyway, this is Molly. She will be with us uh, and around us for most of our videos from this point on. The other thing I wanted to talk about is an amazing milestone we just hit. So we just crossed over the 500,000 count subscribers on YouTube and I cannot even tell you guys how excited I was about that because I never would have dreamed that what we were doing out in the garden would be like such a big thing. Like I get so many messages from you guys telling, telling us how we've inspired you to get out in your garden or it's helped you through a really tough time. And gardening does that because gardening is amazing. So I kind of attribute it most to that because you know, it's just such a neat thing to do. Um, and I think it's just a very good therapy thing. And you know, all of that aside, we just appreciate your support so much. And I cannot believe we've hit it. Um, and we're just gonna keep going. So anyway, we wanted to start the garden tour in this garden right here because this is where the most open tulips are. These are 600 and I can't remember, we will put it up on the screen. I can't remember all the names of all the tulips we planted. I probably should have brushed up on that before we did this tour video, uh, but we'll get it up on the screen or down in the description down below. But there are 600 tulips in this area that are looking amazing. And you guys, we had a fierce windstorm last night and I was so worried because I knew we were gonna film this tour today and I was just like, please let those tulips still be standing in the morning. And they are, they're looking awesome. We've got some limelight hydrangeas in here that are all budded up and looking great. Um, so this area, I feel like it's just coming alive. And I complained a little bit last year about planting so many tulips. Um, and I thought, you know, I will never do that again because it's a lot of work. Tulips are kind of the worst to plant, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I will probably do it again because it's amazing when you have a larger size garden how quickly things get gobbled up. Like I can't just plant a few of this and that and then ha expect them to show up. And I won't complain about that either because I am so thankful to have this garden and have the space to try things out and do things like this. It's amazing and I love it. Um, but you will probably be seeing another bulb video this fall where I'm planting scads of tulips and um, I kind of stuck with more of like the muted color so a lot of white I have some yellow ones I'm going to show you here in a minute um, and next year I might go for a little bit more pop in color uh, but in this bed right here there's not I mean there's a little bit going on we've got our fat Albert blue spruce which he's looking really nice uh, we've got a hawthorn we're still we're gonna have to work with Molly on getting out of the flowers hey Molly come here good girl uh, we've got some lemon coral sedum right here that's looking absolutely fabulous. I love the way the new growth looks in the spring. I meant lemon jade sedum, very different. Um, this one gets really pretty yellow blooms on the top and it gets about this tall or so. I've got some Morden blush roses in here, which are looking great. No aphid damage on them yet, which is wonderful. I have to watch my roses really closely for aphids. In fact, we're gonna do a video about them here pretty soon because it's probably my number one pest out in the garden. 
Um, and then we've got just some other things. I haven't really worked on this part of the flower bed much. I want to this, maybe this year, kind of bring this flower bed out around that Royal Raindrops crab apple that's kind of right in the grass there and make a nice deep bed and make an area for more plantings of shrubs and perennials. But there is a nice honeysuckle here. And then I love this gold juniper. I use this a lot in cut flower arrangements for the, the texture and the color. And then here were just some perennials that were here when we moved in that are coming back. There are some daisies, black eyed Susan, salvia, gallardia. Molly, come here, good girl. And then the last thing is the red point maple in this spot here that we planted last spring that's looking great, putting on a lot of buds right now, about ready to open up. So I think let's head this way behind the gazebo and kind of around it because this area has changed quite a bit. Last fall, we had an ash tree right at the corner of this gazebo. It, in fact, it was right here. And we had it removed because it kept dying like huge sections at a time. It had borers really bad. Um, and so instead of trying to limp along this really sick tree that was starting to get really misshapen, we did have it removed, which will allow us to reshape this bed here. In fact, we took out all of the edgers that were here. We're gonna take out the brick path and do something a little bit more uniform. Uh, and then we'll just kind of, we'll just redo it. I'm not even sure what we're going to do. In fact, this year I might get a tree in and then a bunch of annuals, like some sunflowers and some fun things like that, that I can do cutting. Um, so I can have some time to think about it. The only thing really left in this bed, there are some hostas. Um, we have some variegated iris. I have a North Pole Arborvita spiral there. Uh, and then my, of course, my little boxwoods that I love. I just trimmed those up, got them shaped up a little bit. And then this area has changed a lot since we moved in. I'm always just keeping my eye out for Molly right now. She kind of like ventures. She's, she was in Versailles just now and here she comes. She's gonna see me in the flower beds though and think it's okay. Um, so there was a hawthorn tree right here that came out as well. It was starting to revert back to its parent plant, which means it was a grafted version of whatever variety it was. And so whatever, variety was below the graft that's what was growing up uh, and then it had blight really bad and I see, couldn't seem to get on top of it so we are trying with this property to remove things that are diseased sick dying and replace them with things that do not need to be treated chemically with anything things that are tougher for our native environment so this area again is going to be a little bit of a process i might do a cutting garden in here this year with a bunch of annual cutting flowers i think that would be really fun it gets a lot of sun right here it would be beautiful um, and i think something different than what i normally do and then we'll kind of let the area evolve as it goes i did plant a curly locks willow uh, the other day which I still haven't taken the little like protector off of the trunk. Um, this one is grafted right here. So right above the graft, it only grows about five by five. So it's like the perfect little lollipop tree to keep right here at the corner of the gazebo. I have done quite a bit of work to this bed though on the other side. I do need to do a little perennial moving because you can see I have some Centranthus, right? Is it Centranthus? Jupiter's red valerian. Jupiter's beard. Anyway, it like comes up all over the place and I love it. I love that perennial, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to move them. So they're kind of all in one little block, but I have a dark night caryopteris here. Um, I just planted this right here, uh, which this is an avatar blue spruce. There are a few things I planted that I didn't vlog. I try to catch most of it on vlogs, but our vlog camera got ruined in a storm recently. And between the time when that got ruined and we got the new one, I did quite a bit of planting. So quite a new, a number of things to show you today. I also planted two more of the poet's wife. This is a David Austin rose. I planted this one last year and then wanted to add two more. Beautiful full cupped yellow roses that smell amazing. They have like a fruit salad kind of smell like that. They have that traditional rose smell with that bright kind of fruity smell. I just love them. Then I just planted in a video 18 black night uh, delphiniums, which will grow like this tall back here and have beautiful blue blooms. And they'll be backed by the black lace elderberry here, which grows pretty good size. And then I've got a plum that I planted last spring. Um, and then this area I worked over pretty good last year. Uh, we have some uh, nephophia in there. I think it's flashpoint is the variety around the lamppost. There is a hydrangea, a um, 
butterfly bush. I just planted this pincushion flower because I had lemon coral sedum there last year, which is an annual. So um, I planted those in the place of that. And then there's some pop star sedum coming back right there. It's looking awesome. This is another area that I've worked a little bit. We just recently got this bird bath from Henry Studio. Um, I think it's called the Grand Acanthus bird bath, and it is grand. I mean, this is a huge bird bath, uh, but I thought it would be a great location back here, just tucked in, because this is a smoke bush here. We have the oaks back here, which you guys, the oaks are coming out this year, we decided. They're coming out this fall. So we'll let them green up and do their thing this year, and we'll have them as a backdrop. Um, and then we're gonna remove them because of the viral issue that's going on. And I think I might go in with some Corinthian linden trees and make a new hedge um, of those, but we'll see. We'll keep you guys updated on that. But I've got five more David Austins in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, and it's the variety called Mary Rose, which is a really pretty big uh, pink rose. And then we've got a drift of blue fescue here which I've dug up a lot of these that were kind of dotted all over in this bed and I moved them all to this section. So I'm hoping this fills in and creates this just really nice kind of natural drift. And I think the blue with the pink in the background will look really nice. I've also got some cat's pajamas um, nepeta in here. It's a beautiful cat mint um, blooms for most of the summer. Appletini heuchera. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff. Boy, I think I had a tag on this one. This is a Skylands oriental spruce which the yellow is actually the color it has on its new growth and i love it i love having this tree i've had some people ask me if it's sick it's not this is the color of the tree and i look for stuff like this that's unique and a little bit different and you can see all the new candles i don't know aaron can you get close on that look at this look at all the new little growth here that's amazing they're so cute then we've got another Caryopteris here and a bunch of sem uh, three, Summerific Berry Awesome Hibiscus. So let's go through here and I'll show you the other drift of tulips that we've got going. These were, these are actually colorful. Um, recently trimmed up the boxwoods here. We've got some Avalon daffodils. Look at those. These were part of the big bunch I planted last year. There are, I think 25 of them in this area. Look at how big those are. And I love how they're buttery yellow and then they get kind of white toward the bottom of the petals. Absolutely gorgeous. More daffodils next year, you guys. And then this area behind the chicken coop that's still in the works. Um, this is full. This is called like the Pinotage blend. Pinotage, I think. It's a mixture of three different colors of pink. There's like a pink, a purplish pink, and a burgundy. Uh, and so, so far it looks like just like the pink is up. These were originally here, this little clump right here. And I enjoyed them so much last year against the wild, I think this is wild rose heuchera or wild berry, wild rose, wild berry. But I enjoyed that color combination so much that I decided to mass plant that kind of color tone in this area. And you, as you can see, they're all budded, just starting to open with some color. So once we have more of a show here, we might just do like a bulb tour where I show you all the bulbs that are in bloom currently. Um, but let's swing around the front of the chicken coop here. Pellet walkway is doing great. No damage, no real weather going on. I planted, um, we did this part in a video, but I planted more foxgloves right in here um, recently. These are white foxgloves. And then this area is gonna be all brand new. So we only had the run. The run is 10 feet by 16 feet for the chickens. Uh, and that allows us a nice big planting area here. I will have climbing roses. There'll be one planted right about here on the run, as well as two more on the back. I'm planting um, their Zephyrine Druins. They're a thornless climber, big pink roses. I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. There'll be a door right here that goes into the run. And then there'll be a new flower bed right in front from about here. And it'll kind of curve out. Hey, sweetie. It'll curve out and kind of curve back in and then meet the front of that like landing step out there. So this whole area will be planted. There'll be another climbing rose here. Um, I went to this kind of lumber junkyard kind of thing, found some cool doors. So this is going to be the new front door because we broke the other one. Um, I saved the crystal doorknob and everything from the last door. So this will be the front door and then right inside will be the door that leads into the run from inside the building. It fell over in the wind and no glass broke. So I'm just gonna leave it there. 
but I got both of these doors for five dollars. <laughs> I rounded him up and I expected the guy because he he could probably sense that I really wanted these doors. He could have got a lot more money out of me uh, and I was expecting like hundred bucks or something like that and I was gonna pay for it. You know they need some work. I need to cut them. They're, they're gonna be cut to size but when he said five dollars for both I was thinking you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I never find deals like that so I was excited. Um, also on the inside I found this window which we're gonna have framed in right here in this opening and it'll have the ability to open. So we'll have really good ventilation in here. Um, I'm gonna tack some, well, this one can be open to the run, but like there's another window that's totally functional. I'm gonna tack some chicken wire or hardware cloth to the outside so that I can flip that thing open and there can be nice airflow. And then this door we're gonna just have cut. Like one of the, the panes will be removed and we'll have cut so there'll be a opening all the time for the chickens to go in and out. So I think it's gonna turn out really good. I did struggle over what kind of wire to use on the chicken run, which we'll talk more about this later, but I went with half inch hardware cloth because it's predator proof. Anyway, I've gotta dig some down and bury some so nothing can dig in, but it's coming along. Chickens are gonna arrive next week, so we have quite a bit of work yet to do. Let's head back toward here. There's not much going on but I thought we'd talk about it a little bit. So the formal garden has kind of been one of those areas I haven't done much with, you guys know. Uh, it's kind of, it just sits back here. We don't really have a good reason to come back here very often, honestly. Uh, and I want to change that. I want to create more of an area, maintaining, still maintaining like the boxwood hedge and like the formality, but I want to bring more practicality to this area um, and maybe like improve our footprint a little bit, like maybe um, put in, a small orchard, some berries, something like that, and create a reason to come back here. We do have a, a really fun project coming up. I'm not gonna spill details about that here in this video, but it's for the openings on both ends. So we will be changing that up a little bit. And I'm gonna be doing some more permanent plantings in here in terms of this flower bed. I've you know done this with annuals every year, but at some point, like I just kind of want to keep areas for annuals um, in other areas of my garden, but like this, I would like to plant something that's in there that's kind of permanent, and I can always tuck annuals in, but I don't want to have all, like a whole bunch of blank areas that I have to fill up with annuals every single year. So we will have a video of that coming up here pretty soon. I did get the fountain up and running over here, but I turned it off yesterday because the wind was just howling. Let me find Molly, hold on. What do you, what'd you find? You've got something in your mouth. So um, let me plug this fountain in really quick. I forgot to come out here this morning and turn it back on, but when the wind is howling, it just blows all the water out as it's coming down and eventually it could run the fountain dry. So I always try to come out here and unplug it. While I'm on my way, I do have boxwoods in the greenhouse. I'm gonna be pulling these dead sections out. There's a section there and a section in the back. I'm gonna pull out and replace with fresh boxwoods and get those going here pretty soon, hopefully. All right. I put that on too straight, didn't I, in the beginning? And there we go. Perfect. All right, so I think let's go back through here and head to Versailles real quick. Actually, let's veer off and go toward the Angel because there's some more um, tulips up here I wanna show you. But I didn't realize these had opened up so much. So these are some of the ones I planted last fall as well. Again, I can't remember the exact variety. We'll put it up on the screen, but I love this. If you look at the outside, you can see some green detailing on some of the petals. And then you can see that really soft. It's actually got a red edge on it, um, but some of them have a little bit more of that coloring. Like if you look at this one, look how pretty that is. So much detail just in one flower. Don't trip on her. <laughs> she likes to be right around your legs. You know what? Let's just keep going this way. So the tool shed is gonna undergo a little bit of a transformation as well because we are gonna make it Molly's house. Um, she stays inside at night and then she's in and out with us during the day. But like if we go somewhere um, this summer, like, I don't know, when we go to church or we go out to have dinner or whatever, and we don't really want to keep her in the house, we want her outside. I want her to have a space out here. And don't look at my wilted pansies, oh my word. 
I forgot to water these pansies and they are totally wilted. Um, but we are gonna make this Molly's house and then right here, there's an area that's so shaded that I haven't planted anything. So we're gonna put a door in here and create just a little run right here so she can go in and out um, either way. And I'm gonna have, I'm gonna get some new doors for this building and um, just kind of make it match the chicken coop and make everything match the house. So we have a lot of projects going on. But I think that'll be a really cute one and we'll, I don't know, we'll just spruce it up a little bit around here. I've done a little bit of potting um, already. I took this out of a container that was full of other perennials from last year. It wintered over beautifully, so I popped it out and potted it in its own container right here. This is a Galaxy Glow Euphorbia. I thought it would look really pretty next to these pink pansies. And then I've got my mint going right here in a pot. Best to put your mint, even if you put it on a pot, you want to put it on a surface that's not soil. Because if it's on a surface with soil, it will still root through the drain hole. The roots will go and then they'll start spreading out in your garden. It's just like this voracious plant. Um, so I like to put it on the bricks where I know it's not going to root in anywhere. And you can see all of the activity going on right in front of me here. The brick pathway is almost done. We're going to show you that here in just a minute. The guys are still here working on um, some of the last little areas. But first, We'll do around the whole house first. So we've got the leaf motif urns and pedestals. I planted them up with lettuce this spring because I was desperate to plant something and it was before I really had access to a lot of color. Um, and I thought that that would look really cute and I, I think it does. Adding some edibles in and we can cut that later and use it, eat it. Um, and then this little spot is going through some extra work too. All the lavender that I cut back and I cut it back hard um, is coming back really beautifully. I've got a boxwood that I just moved up here from in front of the gazebo. There's an agapanthus, a viburnum, and then I just recently planted a Winecraft black smoke bush along with some really pretty coral pink poppies. Uh, and then this is the other big drift of tulips that we planted last year. And this was the last batch of tulips I planted that day. And I had just about had it. I was so tired when, once we got here. <sighs> Yeah, I was thankful when it was done, but it, they're beautiful. Um, so these have a lot of the green detailing on the outside as well. And I just love how thick they are because tulips here, I mean, they stick, it depends on the variety, but they stick around pretty good, but they don't naturalize like daffodils do. Um, so when you plant them in mass like this, I can expect like next year between the squirrels and just some general die out, they'll kind of thin out a little bit, which is totally fine. Um, but that's kind of why I like to start with some thick to begin with. And in the middle of all of them, we've got some incredible hydrangeas, which are starting to leaf out. So it'll be perfect. They're kind of protecting the new growth. The tulips are protecting the new growth here on those hydrangeas. Um, planted more of the pink tulips here, but I have a lot of blank space that I can do some stuff with this year. I've got a Crimson Queen Japanese maple that we planted last year, kind of along the same time that I planted up this whole area. There are some hostas in here. I hope I didn't just step on one right there. Nope, oh, I missed it. So we've got three coast to coast hostas in here with the big bright yellow leaves. Tough stuff, aha hydrangeas, which are coming back pretty good. I'm excited about that. And then the tater tot thuyas, arborvitas, right here to kind of end the whole area. Um, these tulips, so I planted these, was it sometime in February, I think. Um, I went and got some pre-potted tulips and planted them in here with violas. In the last windstorm, they just kind of lost their, their <laughs> petals. So they're just now starting to look bad. So we made it almost two full months with these tulips in here, which is amazing. Um, that's really like good time for tulips, a lot of longevity. So the wind is picking up and I'm hoping it holds out long enough for, get, for us to get our tour done. But I want to show you this before we head over to the vegetable garden and brick pathway. There's Molly sitting right in the middle of the flower bed. That's gonna be life now for a while. But I planted a bunch of perennials in here last year and I did mess up some of my labella pock tulips. Um, there's still a nice drift right there and they kind of come around and kind of go back toward um, the lilac there. But the labels that were right in here kind of got messed up. I've got a few more right here. So that means that this next fall, I'll probably be popping some more in here. Of course, they're not even, they're not even blooming yet. So we'll show you that later on. And then here we've got the uh, pink frost hellebores that are just in their absolute prime right now, looking amazing. Um, we've got a happy jack. I think this is a happy jack uh, clematis, that this is its third season in this pot and it just comes back beautifully every year. 
All right, so let's head to the vegetable garden. I have Sweet Romance Lavender planted in front of the garden space and it's all coming back wonderfully as well. I just can't wait. You can see I, I took one pot away. I'm getting ready to do a new project and I wanted to try it out in that container so that one's in the greenhouse. But the Weeping Willow is looking beautiful and I'm gonna try to figure out, I can't figure out what I wanna do with this area, you guys. Um, I thought about making a, a circle, like a circle or having the willow trunk as the center and having a really distinct circle of grass with that as the center and then uh, like landscaping around the circle but having it come out a little bit into the driveway so it looks like it's not so because this is the grass that was there there used to be a fence right here right along the grass all the way to the back before we had the greenhouse in um, so it's just kind of like I don't know I need to do something with this area and I don't know if that's going to happen this year probably not we've got a lot of stuff going on but I'll be thinking about it until then vegetable garden is coming along beautifully I've got some blizzard snow peas coming up my other peas are coming up much better um, spinach we've got cabbage garlic is looking beautiful I've got 60 walla walla onions in this bed here there are carrots coming up which you can see really nice there's four rows of carrots in here which I probably could have planted them a little closer together but that's okay I've got some lettuce here. Nothing's planted in this little section right here yet. And nothing's planted in here yet either. I've got parsnips, which did germinate. They're starting to come up. You can see a little green here. I'm hoping for a little bit better germination than I'm seeing right now. I'm gonna give them a little bit of time. It kind of turned a little cold on us. So it kind of like set everything back a little bit. But this whole area is full of spinach. I seeded some new spinach here. This is from last summer, like late summer I seeded that. And we just ate some the other night. Uh, sunset lettuce. Look at this. Look at the color. Beautiful red foliage. I can't wait till this stuff gets bigger. I've never grown this variety before. Um, six celery plants. There's a celery, uh, cilantro and bull's blood beets on the other side of the cilantro there. We've got more Italian garlic, more Walla Walla onions because we use a, a bunch of both of those things. And then these are the golden sweet peas. Let's see, yeah, golden sweet peas. Look at the germination on these. These are beautiful. I've had a problem with that teepee over there. It keeps wanting to topple over in our wind. This one stays put. So that could be a reason why those, those seeds might've gotten jostled a little bit uh, in some of our storms we've had. And then I've got radishes here. And then there's really not much in this bed except for this thyme. This is a lemon thyme plant. And chives right here. And then back behind me is our brick path. Um, so we did decide to hire people, professionals, to come and put in the path for us because it's just too big of a job for Aaron and I to do. And we do tackle a lot of our own stuff, but there's, there's a limit. <laughs> and Aaron and I don't really enjoy working on big, heavy projects like that. It would have taken us weeks and weeks to do that. So we just decided to call um, a professional, a guy that does amazing work. I mean, you can see right here, it is straight. Uh, you will notice I was struggling between going kind of curvy or straight and my gut said to go straight. Um, and I think I did the right thing. I had my mom come over, we looked at it. Um, I also asked for several other people's opinions and straight was the way to go because it's too narrow of an area and for the width of the pathway we wouldn't have been able to curve it very much and it would have looked a little bit too contrived a little bit like i was trying too hard to create a winding path where i really shouldn't be um, and this area is going to end up being pretty formal i mean we've got boxwood hedging that we're going to be putting in and some big concrete pieces which you guys will be able to see um, so let's head out here do you remember the name of these bricks erin they're like red and charcoal yeah, we'll put it in the description down below. Uh, but I'm really happy with the color. I like the blend. I like that they're different. Um, so it's not just all the same color. So this right here um, goes out into the driveway. This will all be planted area. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to go in the whole space yet. Uh, it'll just have to kind of evolve probably just over the years. And then lining the driveway with bricks here all the way down and on the other side. And that's what the guys are working on right now is finishing up that area there. So we'll have an access here. We'll have access from the vegetable garden and then we'll have access all the way at the end. So let's head down that way. We've got the five red point maples planted from last year. And I don't think we're going to have to adjust any of them. I thought after we got the straight lines in, we might have to move a couple of them to make them really straight. But I think they're close enough to where we can leave them. 
So I've got a collection of plants down here, which I've already talked about in previous videos. I have not planted them yet, clearly, because um, I wasn't sure how everything was gonna go and I didn't want anything to be in the way. So they're just kind of moved off to the side and then we'll kind of start, um, once the concrete's in, we'll start placing things and deciding where everything should go. Um, this will be the very end. We gotta be careful right here. This will be the very end of the pathway and it'll curve out to be right in the like dead center of the driveway and that'll be the second access right there. Um, so as far as how this brick pathway was laid, we did a, a patio last year, which we'll link that video down below. It's basically the same steps. Molly, come here. So, you know, you excavate the area, you make it level, um, you put down a layer of road mix, which is kind of a mixture of sand and crushed gravel, and then you tamp it down. That's what this is right here. You tamp it down really hard. So they had like a big machine out here doing that. And then there's a layer. I used sand on the patio. They've used kind of this um, really fine. It's a crushed, it's not round like pea gravel, but it's uh, like got really sharp edges so it packs really nicely together. That's what uh, layer they're using right underneath the bricks and leveling them all up. And they stopped here so that they could get the driveway line down here and then we can decide what kind of a curve we want here at the ending. Um, and so then that kind of snowballed into we were thinking about what we could put at the very end of this pathway as kind of a really beautiful vista. Because I can see, if you turn around and look that way, you can see right into the vegetable garden. And I need to get something really awesome to put right in the center there as kind of your view. And then I want something really amazing right down here as well, which may not happen this year either. Um, but I gotta go get Molly because she's, she's over in the neighbor's grass. Molly! So while I'm out here, we do have a chandelier pear I planted last year that's in full bloom. Look at how beautiful that is. These grow like 40 by 15. And I was kind of hoping that it would mask the pole right there from this view. So I think it's gonna do its job and it's healthy so far, so I'm glad. Okay, so we will show you guys when this is all done and when we start to plant. You guys will get to see every step of every plant pretty much that we're putting in this area. So I'm hoping that we have something nice and green for you to look at by the next video in this area. So let's head back into the yard. So on the west side of the house, this has changed quite a bit because as you know, we were able to move our AC unit over to this side of the house. I haven't done anything to try to hide it. In fact, I'm almost kind of proud of it. <laughs> I'm like, look, behold, the AC unit is here instead of in front of our house. And I just love that so much that I'm not even worrying about it right now. But I've planted a bunch of stuff in here. We've got the Anna's Red Hellebores that are beautiful right now. I've got the um, Saxifrage, Saxifrage, I don't know how to say that, but these are beautiful. Uh, I planted these. Did I do this in a video? I can't remember. But these are just a nice perennial that will kind of spread out and they bloom spring through summer. Then I've got some um, pink foxgloves in here that will kind of come up and take over once the hellebores are done. There's one limelight hydrangea right there. Um, we've got the black pearl heuchera. This is a, uh, a grass. Ogon, no. Anyway, let's move on to this flower bed up here. I planted some show-off forsythia right in the back of this bed the other day and I just love it. It brought such a bright pop back here. You are not supposed to be in here. Look at the color. So these grow like, I think five to six feet tall and wide and I'm just gonna let them do their thing and fill in back here. We have a red point maple right there and I just need some bulk back here just in case we end up taking this old, old lilac out because we're losing a lot. It's like there's a lot of death in it, dead in it. You can see up here, I'm gonna have to trim out more of this this year, but these big old, old branches, they just slowly die out. Um, in which case we might end up leaving this nice little, you know, clump down below and let it do its thing. Uh, but I'm just not sure what's gonna happen. So I thought to kind of like hedge my bets, I would start planting some bigger things in here to kind of take over if that does happen. There are some tulips. These are also white of some variety. There's patches. Oh, this one's starting to bloom. Look, this one's starting to open. Just barely. <laughs> but there are just um, bunches of those in this bed that I planted last fall. Got some lemon balm in there the other day and then some mulch. So everything's just starting to look a little bit more cleaned up. We have not planted anything in here because that will come probably next month once it warms up uh, a little bit more. I do warm season annuals here. And then this area is where the AC unit was. It was smack dab in the middle of this bed with a huge chunky privet hedge that actually came out 
Well, you can kind of see where the concrete is discolored right here. It came all the way out and you could hardly move um, on this sidewalk. I did have to dig up one of my limelight hydrangeas um, to, so that they could put in the AC unit over there. And then I put that right here um, just so I could maybe bring a little bit of balance to this area, hopefully. Um, it will never be 100% balanced because that's not the front of the house. You know, it's different. We have a sun porch on one side and then we just have this little sitting area here. Um, but if I can draw one, one type of plant over this way, just to kind of tie it together, I think it'll look really pretty. I also don't know how it's gonna do here. These get shaded a lot quicker than this one will. And this one will get a lot of heat bouncing off the house. So we'll just have to see how it goes. And it's a transplant. So um, I might have to baby this one a little bit. I have not decided what I'm gonna do in this area. So let me know in the comment section what you would do. I was thinking of doing some kind of neat evergreen right in here so I have some winter structure and then kind of filling in around the base of it. Uh, and then in this section here, I've planted a bunch of hostas and things in here last year, some Hakanakloa that's coming back really nicely. Um, there's some hellebores in there, but this area I'm going to, I think, just deck out with more hostas um, as the season goes. And then I think we'll just end right up here in Versailles. Um, I haven't done much to change this bed. We've got some pansies I planted in there last fall. We had my sister-in-law's baby shower in the yard right here, actually. And that spot was completely devoid of color. So I decided just to pop those in and they've done beautifully. I'm gonna leave them as long as they wanna look nice right there. This corner is evolving pretty quickly. I'm filling it up with lots of stuff. I talked to you about that in uh, a previous video. We just did a vlog where I planted a bunch of stuff in there. And I think we do have individual videos on a lot of the plants that have already gone in. Um, and then of course up here, uh, we don't have anything planted either because I've got uh, warm season annuals coming. I'm gonna try something completely different in this area this year because it's an odd spot. It gets weird amounts of sun, like a shocking lack of sun and a ton of water. Um, so we're gonna try something different than Supertunia's up here to see what kind of action we can get going. Um, and then the very last bed I wanna talk about is this one here. I do think we wanna come in because you know, there's no really like distinction between gravel and and mulch and it kind of gets messy over time. So I think we might put a little line of bricks around this and just kind of make it look separate and clean. We've got sprinter boxwood, which have done beautifully. Not, I haven't lost a single one. And they started off about this big and they're now like looking like legitimate bigger boxwoods. <laughs> I love it. We have the Cafe Noir tulips coming up pretty well. This is the first year that I've noticed a little bit of uh, kind of spottiness, just kind of right in this area. And I, we did have some water run to this area last year and this is where they had to dig. So I'm thinking that's probably what happened. And then later on, the Russian sage will pick up and take over. This is the denim lace and lace variety. Um, and that's always a really pretty show. So anyway, that's what we have going on in our yard this April. Um, of course, it will evolve really quickly. So we'll probably have a bulb tour. We'll have more videos centered around the brick patio area path area and the um, new chicken coop so you guys can see what happens over there. I'm seeing one more bulb I have to show you. Forgot about these. They're daffodils that I planted right in this spot. Look at how pretty. I put these in a flower arrangement uh, just recently and I had a lot of questions on what they were. They are very fragrant, kind of like paper whites. So use with caution if you don't like that smell, which I don't love it, but these are outside and I don't think I have them thick enough to really make that much of an impact, but they're called early cheer, early cheer, something like that. Um, and I just think that they look so delicate and sweet in this bed. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this tour. We'll have a lot more for you coming up really soon. See you in the next one, bye.